Hey guys, my name is Roberta Peel from Morgan Trail Silver. Um, we're going to have a nice fun little project for you guys. We're going to do a pillbox pendant or you can make it into a ring or just leave it as a pillbox. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll show you how to make the conversions to be able to do whatever size that you want to. Um, looks pretty difficult. Uh, it's actually not, not so hard if you can do a little bit of algebra. Anyhow, it's real simple. It's got a simple little latch clasp and a sliding hinge so you can put your trinkets, pills, um, you know, I'm thinking primarily people who need to take medication regularly here, okay? Keep it legal, you guys. Um, anyhow, I made this one right here into a pendant. You can do whatever you want to with them. Uh, real quick, we're going to cover materials. Um, I've got 20 gauge silver discs. You can buy them pre-cut. This one is a .9 inch. Um, you can get them bigger, smaller, or if you want to, you can go ahead and cut your own. I've got a Swanstrom disc cutter. Just make sure that you take and put a piece of 20 gauge silver on the opposite side of what you're cutting on. And then what that does is it'll keep your swanstrom level so that when it cuts, it cuts about perfect. Um, so we've got two of these that I had cut already. And then you're going to need, and I made mine, I wanted it to be about a half inch high. So we have a half inch by three inch uh, strip of 20 gauge as well. Um, now uh, other materials that you're probably going to need. We've got 18 gauge twist wire, a little silver ball. And then this right here is just some 20 gauge wire. Okay. Um, anyhow, we're going to make this really quick really simple. If you want to, you can go ahead and texture these before you cut them. Same thing with this one. I would leave the back blank with nothing on it but a hallmark. You know, maybe an ASA mark or whatever. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and get going. Alright, so once you guys get your pieces textured, I'm only doing the top of it. I could do the side if I really wanted to, but this is just instructional. Okay. And then I've got my hallmark on the back piece. Otherwise, I'm leaving it pretty plain. Um, next thing you want to do, this is about a point nine, but just to double check and make sure because you want everything to be as exact as possible. You want to break out your calipers, make sure that they're zeroed, and just give it a quick measurement. It's about a point nine. Okay? So what we're going to do is you're going to break out your calendar, or your calendar, your um, calculator. Go point nine times, this is on my iPhone, you just tilt it to the side, times pi equals 2.82, okay? So, we know it's going to be about 2.82, you always round up to the hundredth. Zero your calipers, make sure it's on inches. Go out to, and this one will go out a significant difference, I think it goes out about three inches or so. 2.82. There we go. You can lock that in. Now, on my three inch piece, I'm just going to go ahead and scribe it. Okay. So I've got a little scribe mark right here. Okay. It's not completely perfect, but I know on this side right here it's fine. Alright, so what I'm going to do is instead of just cutting straight across that, you can saw that off or use what I'm going to use, a pair of shears. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of extra room to give me room to file. Alright. So this right here, at 2.82, should be the perfect circumference to fit on these guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and clip these off. And again, give it a little bit of extra room. Okay, before you do anything else, get a nylon hammer. Flatten that as much as you can. Okay. Because if you don't, what you're going to find is going to happen, and you, you can still see just a hair of that scribe that I made, that little mark. Um, but what you'll find is if you don't actually hammer that down flat, no matter how you cut it or saw it, um, it's going to, um, when you file it down, it's going to come off a little cattywampus. So at this point, it's at your discretion. I'm going to take mine to a belt sander. I've got some, I think, 400 grit on there. Um, and then just make it, do, be really careful, <laughs> get it wet, put it to the belt sander and just file it down that way. Um, you can use a bench vise, you can do it by hand, but just make sure you file that down as flat as you can get it. Alright, and once we do that, then I'll show you the next step. Alright, so in this step all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flux. I'm going to pick solder on. You don't have to pick solder, but I found that I have more control with pick soldering. I'm going to go ahead and put on, I'm using Handy Flux for this one and I always rinse off my brush and dry it right away so it's good to go for the next time. Don't forget to cap off your handy flux. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and set that down. You might not be able to see it, but I've got three little pieces of solder all lined up and ready to go. And I'm using an acetylene air. You can do this whole thing with butane, or acetylene, ambient, ambient air with acetylene. You can do this whole thing with butane if you want to. This is the second smallest tip that came with it. You'll notice that I'm, I'm going to heat it from the top and how I have the seam on the very, very bottom. Okay? So I'm just going to heat it from the top a little bit and work my way around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it until the flux number one stops bubbling and number two turns clear, which usually is around the same time that your metal is going to turn gray. And then in my pick soldering, I'm just going to get the pick red hot. Find a way to get that bad boy on there. Line her up where I want it to go. And sometimes it helps to go in from the other side. There we go. Move this right here a little bit. You see I'm backing the torch off when I get close. I don't want the metal to get super hot. I lost a piece of solder. That'll happen. I'll find it eventually. But until then, I'm just grab another piece. No big deal. Don't touch your metal when it's pissed off at you, it'll burn you. Can't say that enough. Okay. And go right back to where I was doing. And reheat this a little bit. Alright. Now Notice I'm really primarily keeping it on top until it really kind of starts to turn pink. I'm going to work my way all the way around because what you want to do is you want to heat up the top part before the rest of it. It'll draw the silver up towards the top. And this is hard solder, which means it's going to have to get hot, so be careful that you don't melt it. And we've got some flow. I just want to make sure it's going to go right where I need it to go, and I'm backing my torch off. As soon as I see that it gets about up to temp. And I like to use my pick every now and then. Kind of slide the solder around a little bit. Make sure it sucks in really good. There we go. Another neat little trick. Alright, so as soon as your metal stops cooling red hot, give it a second. Lift it up off from the block, let it cool off on its own. And I try never to quench my metal when it's super hot like this. Give it a quick dip, let it sit in there for just a second, then you can handle it. Check your seam. And that looks really good. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and drop this in the pickle pot, and then I'll show you how to reshape it. Okay guys, we're back from the pickle pot, and uh, we're going to go ahead and check our seam. It looks like it went all the way through, and that's nice. Got just a little bit of over. Do you notice I only flux on the inside? That's because I don't like having that extra solder on the outside. So all I'm going to do is I've got a coarse, coarse uh, silicone wheel, or uh, sorry, a medium silicone wheel, and I'm going to go ahead and clean up any overage in the solder before I go any farther. Doesn't take very much with this one, and there's really not a lot there, but you know, just kind of want to make it look as pretty as you can. with the outside. Just clean it up a little bit. You notice I'm only going uh, up and down, right? I'm not going side to side. Just like this. Really lightly. Alright, that ought to do it. So now we're going to go ahead and reshape it. Um, got a ring mandrel right here, and let's get these out of the way. And uh, all I'm going to do is just kind of pull up on it a little bit. You don't really want to stretch the metal, okay? That's not what the objective is here. You'll see that I'm going to use two fingers to pull up on it gently as I tap. This is just a little nylon hammer from Joann's. 
just a little bit because I'm not trying to stretch it. Try and get this right back out to a nice circular shape where it should be. And I'm only tapping on the outside edge. Okay, and you can tell, you can tell where it still needs a little bit of tapping down, otherwise it's not perfectly circular, just by turning and taking a look at the gaps. But don't pull too hard. Because you'll end up stretching the little thing. We don't want that. Okay, so do a little spin and tap. We'll go to the other side. Same thing here. Okay, at this point I'm just holding it still because I don't want to stretch it. You can pull it off and inspect your work. And the best test is going to be checking to see how it lines up to your silver disc. And that is almost a perfect match. Okay? Now I could cut this down and file it down a little bit more and make it make it a little bit more of a perfect match, but I think this will suffice for what I'm going to do with it. So check it out on both sides. It's not quite perfectly circular yet. So we're just going to put it back on here. not hitting it very hard. Real light strikes is all you need to do. Do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, the other side looks pretty good. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we've got our tubing. This is a three and a half millimeter outer diameter. Um, it's, uh, it's the item number 100452 from Rio, and it's this heavy walled sterling silver tubing. So what I'm going to do is opposite of the seam, just because I like to have the seam on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, zoom in a little. There we go. So what we're going to go ahead and do is put our tube in here, get a little marker, and mark it right along the top. Alright, so when I go to take these over and cut the tube off, I'm going to want to cut right on the inside of this line on the short side. Okay, so we went ahead and got our tube cut. See? Little tube. It's about a half inch, but it lines up pretty close to the top. If it, if it goes over, that's okay. You don't necessarily want it below the, the um, or a little bit shorter, because if it is shorter, then it might actually have a, you might have a problem when you're riveting. But anyhow, so we've got it just over, and that's just fine because that means I can file some of it down. And as you'll see, we've got a piece of 12, a little length of 12 gauge wire, and it fits in there perfectly. Okay, so we went ahead and we got it, got some paste solder on there. I'm using medium this time, and my seam is on the opposite end. Okay, you don't necessarily have to do that. That's just what I do. All right, so we've got it set on there about where we want it. Double check just to make sure before you touch your metal because if it's pissed off at you, it's going to burn you. Alright, so paste solder. You'll notice I've got a little dip in here in my charcoal block. Again, I'm going to heat from the top. And this is medium paste solder. You can use soldering pallions or chips, what have you. Um, I like going the easy route. This is just how I do it, however you guys like to do your soldering. As long as you start your heating from the top and work your way around. And make sure that that tube does not get too hot because it'll melt. So I'm really not so much focusing on the bottoms as I am the tops and primarily the sides. And once you see your solder is flown, you can take your heat away. Give it a second to quit being so angry. Give it a quick quench. Check your work looks pretty good and then pop it in the pickle pot Here we go see make sure it's as even as you can get it dead center going straight down okay pop it in the pickle pot next steps coming up okay so we went ahead and we've got our little tube soldered to the inside of it if you look straight down it 
it's pretty freaking straight and that's how we want it to be. All right, next step is you got your front plate and your back plate. You want to decide where you want the top and where you want the bottom to go. What I'll do is I'll take and line up the top, put a little piece of tape around here, and then take the back side of it and make sure that it is lined up, top and bottom, front and back, side and side, and don't let it adjust itself on you. Okay, but if you look at it from the side, they should be level, okay? Make sure that they are. Get, get the tape on there. And then get yourself a centering punch. This is one of mine. And then we're going to take a little marker. And this is kind of where I eyeball things. I'm sure that there might be an easier way to do this. But I'm going to take a little marker. I'm going to make a dot about where I think that the center of that tube is going to go. I'm going to place the tube over it. And then double check and make sure. So put the tube over, and I'm going to use this right here as a little spyglass. If you look straight down into the center hole, if you see that dot, and it looks like it's lined up pretty good, great. If not, that's okay. You can just wipe it off and just make adjustments as you need. So we have algebra, eyeballing. You guys should see me cook. You either want to laugh or to get really mad at how I do things. Okay, so when I, I don't know if you guys can see that, probably not, but when I peek right down the center of that tube, I made sure that as I'm holding it, I'm making sure everything is lined up. And I'm peeking down that center tube, and it looks like it's dead center. So that's where we want it to go. All right, we'll take our centering punch and a hammer, hold it flat. Get as dead center to that little mark that you made as possible. Give it a good punch. Okay. We've got a little, our little centering punch. And then just to make sure that we don't have to make any other adjustments, I'm going to line it back up. Boy, that looks pretty good. Okay. So now for the next step, we'll take our tape off. And I just came up with how to figure out how to do this today. So anybody who has any suggestions or any ways to make this a little bit easier on anybody, hey, speak up. Everybody knows that when you're metal, or I hope everybody knows that when you're metal smithing, that there's more than one way to do things. All right, so this right here is a Dremel, uh, Dremel bit. It's 106. Um, I don't know exactly how many millimeters it is. I just know I use it a lot. <laughs> I can get it and I'll put it in the comments for you guys if you need me to. Pop that into the Fordham or whatever you prefer to use. Don't do this on your steel block, okay? Get a wooden base, something that you don't mind having some holes in. Um, I would definitely dip this into some burr life. If you're concerned about your burrs, I'm not. And just punch it all the way through. And do the same thing with the next one. And be careful because it can and it will get hot. And you really want to make sure that it goes all the way through. There it goes. Okay, then we're going to switch over to the 107 Dremel drill bit. This one's considerably larger, okay? But this is going to allow that 12-inch um, wire to slide straight through both pieces. Same thing, dip it in some lube first if you're concerned about your bits. Go straight through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to thread our piece of 12 gauge wire through it. And we're going to thread it through here. And then on the back side over here. And aside from that little overage that I still have to clean up, it lines up beautifully. Okay, and I'll show you how to get this right here off. See where that tube is hanging out? That's that little bit of overage I was telling you about. But if you look at it, it's lining up really nicely. Okay? So, um, you can do this two ways. You can 
Uh, get yourself a piece of sandpaper to get this right hair off and rub it down. Um, I like to dip mine in water and just hold it over the belt sander and let the belt sander do the work for me. And it'll keep all the edges uh, pretty flat, but anyhow, so I'll do that on both sides likely and just kind of get it where I want it to go. Um, okay, you guys, went ahead and got that filed down. It's pretty good. And the next step, it's pretty simple. We're going to take our little piece of wire that we went ahead and hardened. And we're going to try and get it down inside of a bench vise. As close to the top as we can get it, but not all the way down. Flush. Okay. Now on the inside of here I've gotten two pieces of rawhide and it's actually being held on by um, uh, painter's tape. Okay. We're going to give it a couple quick zips across the top just to make sure it's pretty flush. want it as flush as you can get it. I could do this on the belt sander too, but I don't want to bend the wire. So we're doing it by hand. Okay, and then we'll get our centering punch again. Try and get it as center as you can get it. Little tap. Go back over to your Dremel 106. Bird, or it says for engraving. And all I'm going to do, and I know you guys can't quite see this, I'll show you what it looks like, is I'm just going to go ahead and make a teeny tiny, bitty bitty, little, little dip. It's not deep, it's just, it's pretty shallow, but it's about dead center. Okay? And right here we want to get it not quite flush, torque it down really, really good. Break out your riveting hammer. Start with this end, and you're going to find with this fine silver, you see how it kind of turns around? It's not going to take very much. Just give it a few taps, and I do it until I see that that little dot's gone, because it's not very deep. But if you're pretty new at this, don't worry too much about the dot. Okay. You see it's still kind of got a little bit of a bend in it. Now don't worry about how this wire looks as far as marked up or anything like that because it's not really going to matter. What is going to matter is when you fit it through here, is it going to come to a stop? Okay. Also don't worry about it if it's raised up a little bit. See how it's raised up a little bit? We're definitely going to fix that too. Okay. Alright, so that's pretty much got the rivet started, and that's just how I do it. I know they actually have riveting tools, but make sure that the rest of your wire is nice and flush. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we went ahead and got everything pickled, and I went over to the bench and grabbed a couple little things that we're going to need next. One of them is an 18, I think it's about a 5 millimeter jump ring, and a little fine silver ball. And the first thing that we're going to do just come over here with some medium paste solder. That's medium, right? Yep. And we're just going to solder the ball onto here really quick. Make sure that your ball is directly opposite of your hole. And just right on the edge. I'll show you. Okay, so see directly opposite of the hole, right on the edge. Okay, now let's go ahead and fire a little torch. And again, doesn't matter what kind of flux or solder that you use for this one. Just make sure that it stays where it needs to be. And if you have to manipulate it a little, back your torch off and do it while it's still hot, right before the silver flows. There we go. All right, so we're gonna let that cool off a second. And then we'll throw that in the pickle. And then, 
going to grab our little jump ring here and make sure that the seam is on the top. If you want to, you can go ahead and clip this off and just make it like a little half round circle. That's not a big deal. You can go ahead and do that if you really want to, but um, I'm not going to because it's a little bit harder to line up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is switch over to, oh, uh, let's do extra easy solder. And we're going to do a little half moon. Now when you do this, when you get this soldered on, you want to make sure it's sticking out just enough, and you can always hammer the inside of it too if you really want to, but you want to make sure that it is sticking out just enough directly below where the ball is going to go, and you can mark it too if you want to, um, just enough for your wire, and at a 5 millimeter, I'd say just under halfway, and you're probably going to have to hold it there when you solder. So, Let's do this. I'm going to heat up my box first. And you can put some marks on there as well, some little scribes, so that you can uh, If you have a third hand, that might actually work a little bit better than this. And I'm back in my torch office. I manipulate it a little. Okay. And so that is directly below where your hinge pin's going to go. So we're just going to leave that there to settle. We're going to pull everything off and then go ahead and quench. Okay, so now we've flipped it over. We're going to go ahead and repeat the same process. We've got our center punch marked on there. And then we're just going to really carefully drill into that hole. Don't have to do it very fast. It does not have to go very deep. Just has to be centered. Okay, take just a little bit of metal off the center. Alright, and we will take you right back over here. There you are. Okay, we're going to put the riveted end through the bottom. This end right here through the top. There we go. Helps to kind of hold on to the top piece. See, I'm hanging it over the edge. And again, with the riveting hammer, okay? A little bit across. Put it over. Now, here's the trick to it you don't want it too tight, you don't want it too loose, you don't want it too tight. send right over here is definitely going to need a little bit extra work. We're going to get a little bit more on this side. Okay, so now that we've got our top part riveted, and I apologize, my battery died, I had to replace the battery. But see, it's nice, slides back and forth, works out really well. Now you need about, uh, this is about two and a half inches of um, sterling silver, it's um, twisted wire, okay, and this is from Rio as well. And so all I'm going to do, and this is just about wire manipulation, if you guys can manipulate wire, you can do this. Um, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's a little easy to, easier to figure out than it is to explain. In fact, I think this part right here is why I'm doing the video, just so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. So I'm going to fold it in half, best as I can. 
get it to where it loops over this part, uh, this little ball that we've soldered on the top pretty nicely. And then we're going to fold it down. Fold it down, and then what I'll do when I manipulate it is I'll fold it down on either side, pop it off, squeeze it together just a little bit. Just like this. And then, for this one right here, you can fold the wires down if you want to, but for this one right here, I'm just folding the wires up. Okay? See? Got it looped nicely around the top. It's a little snug, but it's not terribly snug. This part you're really going to have to fiddle with when you're getting it on and off, because at first it's going to be a little hard to snap on and off. But after that, it'll it'll get used to it. It'll it'll work it out on its own. Just make sure that everything down here is even. And we've got a little pair of uh, wire cutters, and then I I'm terrible. I'm sorry. I eyeball everything. I don't measure anything. And what I'll do is I'll cut possibly just a little bit more than what I need. Make sure it goes straight across. get a pair of pliers. Now you don't want this part right here getting too tight so you see how I'll push it down just a little bit at first and then I'll go to the top go top to bottom and push it down a little bit more. Oh that's pretty good, it won't even catch. Alright and uh, this is the part where you give it a quick test run Make sure that your pendant is going to slide open, it's going to slide closed, it's going to snap shut for you, okay? And then the final step is just your polish, however you guys choose to do your polish. I'll take this one to a bench polisher and, um, you know, again, make sure that these aren't going to really catch too much, and they don't seem to be, but... I'll probably take my silicone polishing wheels to it anyway. Maybe. And just manipulate your wires, make them look pretty. But that's that's it. That's the ins and out of it. So that's how you can make a quick little catch catch lass, catch hasp and, and a um little little riveted slide slide hasp. That's it. That's all there is to it, you guys. So the hard part is putting it all together. I mean, the riveting part is pretty easy. Um, again, from here, I'm just going to go ahead and polish it up. And uh, she's ready to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, please mind your safety when you're doing these kinds of things, whether you're making a, making one of these or playing around with anything else. You know, we really want you guys to be safe. Um, you guys can join us at uh, OregonTrailSilver.com to buy metal stamps and jewelry. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can find us on the Let's Make Jewelry page on uh, Facebook. And this is what it's going to look like when it's all polished up. Um, Let's Make Jewelry is a Facebook group that Craig Dabler, it was his idea. Uh, it's me and Craig Dabler and um, Richard Barrett and uh, everybody's favorite, Brad Smith. Well, everybody's, everybody's favorite. Um, anyhow, we, uh, we all got together and we're doing this little group now, so I hope that you guys enjoy this. And um, If you have any kinds of constructive criticism on technique, uh, again, using different tools, suggestions like that that might make the riveting easier for some people, please, you're more than welcome to, um, you know, we encourage that kind of thing with us. Um, that way, you know, people can get on there and, and be able to do these things a little bit easier for themselves. Uh, I just came up with this one today, so I figured, well, we'll just go ahead and show it to the group. Anyhow, um, I hope you guys have a safe holiday season, and take care. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Bye!